So it was fantastic to actually read that, Jane Austen breaking that fourth wall and calling everyone out and basically being like, well, you're enjoying this, you're reading this, why should my work be undervalued? Hello my loves and thank you for joining, it's Kirsten and yes we're looking exactly the same as we finished off last week's vlog because I'm filming it about 20 seconds after I finished that one. I do have work this afternoon and I wanted to kick it off and I do have reading plans this week so a book that I have to prioritise this week is Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. I'm so excited for this one. This is meant to be her comic take on some of the classics from her time period so Anne Radcliffe. Very excited Excited, although intimidated because it does mean that after I read this one at some point I'm going to have to read Anne Radcliffe's works as well because I love reading the books that inspire other authors. It's just something that I love doing, I love being able to trace it back as far as I can and just enjoying those books. But intimidated because the one that I've seen for Anne Radcliffe is like this thick, like it's a she's a chunky girl. But first of all, before we have to tackle that, we have Northanger Abbey and I'm really excited for this, especially because at the end of the week, on Sunday, I am going with one of my friends from work to see a Northanger Abbey reproduction. It's only an hour long so I don't think it's going to be everything that's in this so I'm, it'll be really interesting and that's why I want to read it because I want to read it first and then see their adaptation and just go from there. So we've planned to meet up a little bit beforehand, have a little wander around and then go see the play because she also loves Jane Austen so yeah I'm super excited for that. The tickets weren't even expensive so that's an amazing bonus. So yeah I, I'm really excited. So this is priority that we need to get through this week which I obviously can't wait for. And then we also have the book that I did start last week but didn't really get far into and that's The Valley of Fear by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. So I got to page 36 and this one is all about Professor Moriarty and Sherlock Holmes kind of obsession with him at the start how the police don't believe that he's anything sinister and think that Sherlock Holmes is kind of a bit eccentric about this but nonetheless they're going to use him to help solve a mystery that's got them confounded because Sherlock Holmes is still good at what he does even if he does have this weird obsession for a professor that seems like the creme of society. Really excited for it. It is the last novel that I have. I don't think there's anything else I think I would have read everything Sherlock Holmes wise which is sad but also amazing. So that is the plan this week. I need to prioritise these two Honestly, I'm thinking that I might even be able to fit in a third book, which would be amazing. And that would be the book you lot chose for the month, which is Cassandra by Crystal Wolf. But this is a maybe. So I might get to it. If I do, fantastic. If not, oh, don't worry. This is a Greek myth retelling, and I'm not going to talk too much about it because if I don't read it this week, I'm going to be read talking about it again next week. So priority is a bit more of a classics week, which I'm really actually feeling. I, I cannot wait. Last week I got to read Helen Troy which is a great book but it's so massive and I just I need something that I can go back to and just take a break from big books and I am really feeling classics so this sounds perfect. So that is the plan this week to read this. Let me know if you've actually read Northanger Abbey, what you thought of it. I'm like I said I'm excited. I'm excited. We don't need to repeat that. Anyway, I've got things to do this morning and I've got work this afternoon so I'll probably update you tomorrow with my initial thoughts of Northang Abbey because I think I'm going to start off with this one. But that's it, it's going to be a scorcher of a day today so uh, fingers crossed we survive that because obviously I do work outside so I'm hoping it will be fine but it is meant to be ridiculously hot today. High 30s is what they're saying so we'll see. Anyway, right, okay, I'm rambling, I've got stuff to do, so I'm gonna go, but I hope you are all doing well. I think I've already said that bit, but I hope you are. Let me know what you're up to, what your plans this week. Actually, by this point, you would see it on fr Friday? Some point later in the week, so let me know what you have been up to and what you've done this week, because you always see it a little bit after when I do these vlogs. Anyway, okay, we're rambling, I'm gonna go. Initial thoughts about Northanger Abbey. It's hilarious. It's so entertaining and I am loving it for that. I'm only on chapter 10 
we're on page 60. The chapters are really short which is really nice and honestly it's just so lovely to read something that is so light-hearted after reading Helen of Troy last week. This is just so much like a breath of fresh air. I loved that book, don't get me wrong, but it was quite heavy in places, whereas this is just entertaining. We're following Catherine, and Catherine is this pretty average girl. You spend the first couple chapters just learning about her, learning how she is just your average girl, that she didn't really have many interests in things, but she does have a vivid imagination, and now she is loving novels. So she is in Bath with, I think it's friends of the family. She is there for her season, finding the husband, you know, things that used to happen during this time. But she ends up becoming fast friends with Isabella, and Isabella is a very bright and vibrant character, as she loves reading gothic literature and so they talk about different novels and it's great because they talk about Camilla by Sheridan Lafana which is a book that I've read and really enjoyed. They also talk about The Monk which again is a book I've read although that's slightly more disturbing um, but not that Isabella and Catherine have read it but that Isabella's brother was talking about it and saying how that's a much better book than the nonsense they've been reading and they're also currently Catherine is reading Mysteries of Udolpho by by Anne Radcliffe, which is a book I do want to read, but I'm terrified of reading because that is the really, really thick book. But I do want to read it because it's referenced so often in this, and it would be nice to understand those references a bit better because where I haven't read it, it's kind of going above. But they're busy talking about that, finding their love of novels, their friendship is flourishing, and then, of course, men are on the scene, and you have Catherine not so much in love for the first time, but definitely interested in the first time, but she keeps missing in the person that she's interested in and keeps getting caught up with Isabella's brother who is a person she doesn't really like and you also see how naive Catherine is because her family's always been very blunt and honest and now she starts seeing the hypocrisy of society how people will say one thing but mean another and she's a bit overwhelmed with all of that and that's kind of where I'm at we've just been setting the scene really but I'm really enjoying it. I think it's so much fun. There's also points where Jane Austen actually spoke to the reader about them reading novels, so about Catherine and Isabella actually reading novels. And she literally, she does this whole massive rant, which I think is great, but to sum it up, they were still resolute, so Catherine and Isabella, they were still resolute in meeting in defiance of wet and dirt and shut themselves up to read novels together. Yes, novels, for I will not adopt that ungenerous and impolitic custom so common with novel writers of degrading by their competuous censure the very performances to the number of which they are themselves adding, joining with their greatest enemies in bestowing the harshest epithets on such works, and scarcely ever permitting them to be read by their own heroine, who, if she accidentally take up a novel, is sure to turn over its insipid pages with disgust. And she goes on to say an, an awful, an awful lot. Yeah, so she goes on for quite a while. And then another bit, which I think, again, sums everything up that she's trying to say is, there seems almost a general wish of decrying the capacity and undervaluing the labor of the novelist and of slighting the performances which have only genius, wit, and taste to recommend them. So she's basically talking about the fact that in society at this time, people that read novels were put down and basically novels were seen as worthless and she refuses to be one of those authors that partakes in that. She very much stands by her work and I love that. I thought it was fantastic to actually read that. Jane Austen breaking that fourth wall and calling everyone out and basically being like, well you're enjoying this, you're reading this, why should my work be undervalued? And I loved that. I thought it was fantastic. And so Catherine herself is referred to a lot as a heroine, because she is. Everyone is their own main character of their own story. And I'm, it's just so much fun. It's, it's great. It's very different to her other works, but it's so enjoyable. So yeah, I'm, I'm very much enjoying this. So I wasn't going to update straight away, considering I have only read 60 pages, but I have got work this afternoon and tomorrow, I'm gonna to be too busy to update. I'm meeting with my sister and we're going to see my dad dealing with everything that happened from the previous week which I'm not gonna get much into but thank you for everyone with all of your lovely comments. It really means a lot 
Um, but yeah, so I'm going to be dealing with all of that. So probably won't be updated until Thursday next. At that point, I imagine I would have probably finished this because it's not a long book. It's like 200 and yeah, 40 pages. So I don't have that long to go. So I do imagine finishing it by Thursday. So I really wanted to give you those initial thoughts of how much I'm enjoying this and how much Catherine is just this person who adores novels and just loves it to be seen especially because when she was younger she was put down a lot and made out to be like quite this ugly girl and now people are seeing her for who she is and she loves it and it's just it's so heartwarming and yet so funny at times and Jane Austen doing her usual calling out of social conventions but this time in so much more of a direct manner which I am very much here for. So yeah, absolutely loving this. Otherwise, I don't have much of an update apart from to say that I am going to be filming straight after this. So you will have seen this outfit. Actually, this would be coming out just before this vlog, which is my very first 24 hour readathon that I am hosting. So I say hosting, this is going to be very relaxed. Basically in June, I did a 24 hour readathon and a lot of you said that you would have loved to have taken part. So I've just put together a list of prompts. I'm doing it more of a themed readathon and the date that I've set works for my schedule, but obviously you guys can do whatever you want with it. You could just use the prompts and have it across the whole month or anything, but a few of you were interested, so I decided to put that together. So we'll see how it goes. I'm a bit nervous, but hopefully it will be fun and you guys will, if you want to take part, take part. And if not, that's not a problem. I'm still going to do these readathons every other month anyway, just as a way to help me tackle this TBR because it is getting a bit out of hand. But all of that will be in that video. So I'm going to stop rambling about it and actually get filming it. Um, and yeah, just wanted to give you that update. So as I said, I will see you on Thursday. Until then... Happy reading. I said I'd have Northanger Abbey done by today. Yeah, that hasn't happened. I am on volume two. So I think, well, we're on page the 119 and there is 200 pages in here, did I say? No, 241. Oh, okay, so I have quite a bit to go. I still have another 120 pages to go for this. I really did think that this was gonna be a quick read and I would get through it but it just never really happened. I did read quite a bit when I was at work, I feel like, or not really. No, not really. Oh my gosh, what is going on? Anyway, regardless, I read about another 60 pages while I was at work, but then yesterday I didn't get to read anything. Yesterday was such a long day, I'm not gonna lie. So it was going up to see my dad and just help with everything that's been happening and just, yeah. So I went up with my sister and we left really, really early in the morning and we made good time getting up there because she drove. And then we spent a few hours, did a nice walk by the canals and stuff, which you would have seen. It was lovely. And then coming home, she had forgot her phone. So we got half hour into the drive, then had to go back. And then we decided, you know what, we're gonna stay for something to eat because we were both getting quite hungry. And then by the time we left again, it was basically rush hour and it took so long to get home that by the time I got back, I went to my partner's because it's closer to her house. And I was just exhausted, I, like, I did nothing. So no reading got done and I honestly thought I would get that all done yesterday. I would like to say I'm gonna get it done today. Like that is the goal because it is only 120-ish pages. No, 140-ish pages, who knows? It's 100 and something pages, but I am off. So I do think that's doable. However, I have loads of editing to do because I've fallen behind again. But I think as long as I get one video edited today, and then I can do another one after work tomorrow, then that's everything that I've got filmed done. And then Monday, we need to film. And then Tuesday and Wednesday is gonna be editing this vlog. We're gonna work it out. Anyway, th this is not the time to try and plan everything out, but yeah, basically we've fallen behind on everything and I didn't get anything read. So this week's reading, 
gone kaput, but that's absolutely fine. Or I also <laughs> feel like just picking up something completely different, maybe a manga, just to be like, ah, I finished something and then bring this one to work tomorrow. That's also a possibility. Who knows what's actually going to happen. I'll probably update you tomorrow after work with whatever we got up to. But regardless, we finished part one of Northanger Abbey and I'm still really enjoying this. It is basically just a humorous piece of work that is to do with enjoying novels and it not seem as very acceptable or the thing to do in society. And Jane Austen's basically going, that's ridiculous. I do feel kind of sorry for our main character, Catherine. She is with this group, like her best friend just hasn't been that nice to her and they're constant, her and her brother are constantly trying to force her into things that she doesn't want to do. Now Catherine's finally like standing her ground, doing what she feels is right and I love that for her. So I'm really excited to see where the rest of this goes. I'm just, it's just a fun time. It's very different to Jane Austen's other works, which I may have mentioned already, but it is, it feels very, very different. But I would say this is so easy to get into. So if you're scared of doing like, reading Jane Austen works or things like that. This is a really, really easy one so far. Like it's not been hard to get into this at all. So for that, I would I would say do this. This is just fun. This has just been so much fun. And I think that's another reason why I haven't been like striving to finish it really quickly because I am enjoying this one, but I need this finished by Sunday, 100%. So yeah, I, I'm gonna have to get a wiggle on and finish this out maybe today or tomorrow. And then when I got home this morning actually, cause I stayed at my partner's house, but he had an early, so we were up really early. So I came home and napped. But when I got here, I was half asleep and I realized I have a package and I don't know why, because I haven't ordered anything and I can't think of anyone that would have sent me anything. So let's just open it on here. It does feel like a book, but I don't know what book because I haven't ordered anything and no one that I know has sent me anything from like unless they've been like telling white lies but they haven't sent me anything what okay so this is Emma by Jane Austen which I loved Emma and this is oh my gosh the Penguin Classic Deluxe Edition and I was thinking about getting this because I love the Deluxe ed Classic Editions there's no note there's nothing in here I don't know what? What? I'm so confused. I didn't order this. But there's no note or anything. I've, I've got no idea. If somebody sent me this, please let me know so I can say thank you because there is no note. Um, and this was on my wish list. It's something that I've just, I love these editions so, so much. I think they're beautiful. They have deckled edges and I just, I love them. They have French flaps. It's beautiful. I love this. But yeah, I, I have no idea who sent me this. But thank you, whoever it was, thank you very much. Um, but yeah, I mean, if it was any of you guys, because I do always have my wish list linked, but it's something that I don't ever expect anyone to actually go on. It's just something that people do on YouTube, so. But thank you, if it was one of you, um, yeah, let me know. But th there's, yeah, wow. <laughs> this is so lovely. Okay, well, um, that there is no note, so I, I genuinely don't know, but I, I'm guessing it was one of you guys because no one else would have access to my wish list. So if it was, thank you so, so much, and, and just let me know so I can actually thank you properly, but wow, this is so unexpected and so lovely, and oh, okay. Okay, right, right, I, I need to, I need to edit. We need to get some composure, but oh. So beautiful. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yesterday ended up being a really nice day. I went to a charity shop 
on my way to meet my partner so I had a train to catch and everything so it was only a really quick glance I had 10 minutes and I thought let me just have a little look and of course the times when you have the least amount of time is when the check shop is just chock full of stuff that you want to get regardless I ended up with a few things that I liked so we'll start off with the books I picked up Animal Farm by George Orwell and I really like this cover I thought it was amazing. Now I know I literally said last week that the books that I'm going to be getting, I'm only going to be buying books that I just want in different editions. However, these are charity shop books. It was £2. Well, £1.99 if you want to be specific. But with that, I just think it's fine. I'm just going to limit myself so that buying brand new books, hopefully, <laughs> is just going to be the nicer editions of classics that I personally want to collect and that any books that I want to add to my physical TBR, so the books I need to read, will be charity shop books. Whether it lasts or not, who actually knows? But Animal Farm by George Orwell, I've never read it and it's Ariel's favourite book. I'll have her channel linked below and she loves it. When I saw it in the shop, I was like, perfect, we're gonna get that. And then I also saw The Last Man by Mary Shelley and this is one of her lesser known books. It is an apocalypse fantasy and I feel like Mary Shelley's known mainly just for Frankenstein. I've read Matilda by her, which is a short story and I really enjoyed that. And so I'm really intrigued to pick up more of her work. And so again, when I saw this, 199, I couldn't say no. Like Mary Shelley is an author that I really want to read. As I've literally just said, more of her works. Um, I want to reread Frankenstein this year and I would love to just, yeah, pick up more of her lesser known works. And then I also have J.R.R. Tolkien's Fellowship of the Ring. So this is volume one of The Lord of the Rings. And I've never read this. I did listen to the audiobook of The Hobbit and I loved the audiobook narrator, but I wasn't as much of a fan of the writing. I don't know how I'm gonna get on with this. As we know, I've been in a bit of a slump when it comes to fantasy. It's not so much that I'm in a slump. I just know exactly what I like now and it's quite particular. So I'm hesitant about this. I did say that I wanted to read this in my 30 books before I turn 30 so I, I just want to try it. I want to try it, get through it and see if I like it and I was quite happy to pick this up second hand rather than paying full price for it of a book that I'm just not sure if I'm going to enjoy. That was the book haul. I thought it was quite good and considering I got all of these for less than the price of a normal book brand new that's a pretty good deal. And then I also found these really cool old frames and they're tiny but they're just gold oval frames and I really like them and I've got lots of different art prints and a lot of them are different sizes so I thought it'd be great to have just these are the perfect size to go on my bookshelves so so that was a very unexpected splurge and 10 minutes that I had for the waiting for my train and then I was at my partner's as you saw we made some pastries did I regret that last night yes because we used normal cheese and oh I did not get a very good night's sleep my stomach was not happy with me at all <sighs> And I had an early shift today, so I'm already in my PJs because I just, I'm too tired, like I, I just can't bother. But I did finish Northanger Abbey today and I really enjoyed this. I will say the ending for me wasn't my favourite, it felt really rushed, but overall I really enjoyed this. It was very entertaining, it was just fun in how naive and innocent our main character is and the imagination that she has, especially the second part where she's actually at the Abbey and the theories that she comes up with. It's just, it was a really, really fun time, especially because you're watching it from her perspective. So you'll see how she justifies a lot of the things and it's almost believable but in a really comical way and it is it's just a really fun time the ending like i said is a bit rushed but i feel like the ending the way it wrapped up is similar to the way her other books wrap up so it was predictable but i feel like that wasn't the purpose of this book this book was just for those people that enjoy reading novels for the sake of reading like they just enjoy it and that's what jane austen was trying to say with this book is it's just good fun to enjoy a book and to see the world in a different way and have that creative imagination or at least that's what I took from it so I just I enjoyed this I thought it was a lot of fun I don't know where it sits with my favorites but I will be doing a whole ranking video that will probably be coming at some point as I've mentioned in other videos maybe in this one who knows but yeah I, I really did enjoy this and it did take me pretty much the whole week to actually read this but I was thinking about it on my walk home I think I kind of prefer taking it slow when it's coming to reading. So last week I read The Massive Chunker, that's Helen of Troy, and I enjoyed that book. It was great, 
but it did get really hard in a way just to keep reading through it and I think because it was such a big book I didn't have any time to properly sit and think about it as I was reading whereas taking my time with this book allowed me to really think about each part that I had read and decide like my thoughts and feelings what the author was trying to do with it and I really enjoyed that so I think what I'm gonna do going forward if it was with bigger books like that is treat it almost like the short story collections how I do it where I don't read it all in one sitting I break it up so I read a couple of short stories across the month I'm going to do the same with bigger books is work out the page count that I need to read over the course of the month and then do that on like a weekly basis and then break it up with other books because I just prefer that I really prefer that it's been very interesting finding out my different reading tastes what I like about fantasy I do want to do a video on that. So many ideas and such little time. <laughs> also the realisation of how I just want to read in general because even today I read the last 120-ish pages today. I liked it but there were points where I was like I could easily put this down and just sit with what I've read but I felt like I really needed to get this finished. Well I did because I was seeing a show on Sunday. That show's now been cancelled because the main actor is sick which is unfortunate and I found out after I'd finished this. <laughs> yeah, I just think reading about 60 to 70 pages a day is kind of my comfort point at the minute, where it just gives me that time to get a feel, get all my thoughts together, and then just go from there. I don't know. It probably will change. Maybe it's just because I read that big book all in one week. I don't know. I think, to be honest, I'm just rather tired. So maybe we should stop now, because we've been talking for almost nine minutes, so yeah yeah you know what let's stop this was good I'm really pleased I finished it I have no idea what I'm going to pick up next I don't even know if I'm going to read this evening and the weekend is going to be busy so I guess we'll see if I manage to pick up anything but yeah okay I'm gonna go I'm gonna do something <sighs> I have had a lovely weekend. Right, so I think I last updated Friday afternoon and then that evening I did actually pick up Black Torch and this is volume one and this was so much fun. I really liked this. This might be another manga that I carry on with once I've completed Tokyo Ghoul because this was surprisingly really fun. I admittedly only picked it up because of the cat on the cover. I had no idea what I was getting in for but actually it's all about ninjas and demons, how they're against each other, the fact that this cat is a demon and our main character can talk to animals and he gets tangled up in all of this. So it was honestly just a fun enjoyable time and I'm really pleased I ended the evening just with that especially after finishing Northanger Abbey and just being quite tired because of it being on early shifts and I ended up going to bed quite early but this was just a really nice one just to relax to and it didn't require too much concentration concentration and I've said it every time but manga's really good for that because you don't need that extra concentration you can just follow the pictures and it's nice and entertaining and sometimes you just get really good ones so this is one that I am probably gonna look out for more volumes of after like I said finishing off Tokyo Ghoul I also want to continue on Promise Neverland but I'm really pleased because I've still got three more where I haven't read volume one that are on my shelves and I'm just trying to read them just to see okay is this a series that I want to continue on with or not and then I know what ones to focus on so that's the plan but yeah anyway that was a tangent but yeah this was really good I really enjoyed it and would recommend if you want something that's just light and fun and just relaxing if you enjoy manga that is and then yesterday was one of my partner's date night so I did have work in the morning and then I came home got changed and we just went out so we had quite a nice evening actually with the meal that we went out for I really liked the starter that I had uh, but the main honestly it just it just needed seasoning I went for a butternut squash lasagna there wasn't really much seasoning in that and so we'll see the vegetables in that they taste nice because they're vegetables but there was not much seasoning which was a bit of a disappointment but the rest of the evening was lovely and in the morning we spent that together I did while I was at work yesterday continue on with a bit more of The Valley of Fear by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle which is the last Sherlock Holmes book I need to read. I like this, this is really good. We're actually back to, because this is a set novel, 
having it where there's the mystery, Sherlock Holmes has solved it, and now we're up at part two where it's more of the backstory to the person that committed the crime and everything that's happened around that. And I like that about his novels because you do get that extra bit about why has the villain done these things, but I really like it for that. So that's where I'm up to. And I was going to wait to update tomorrow morning thinking well I'll read more of this and finish it up because I am on page 96 and there's about 170 pages but then I was thinking about it and I'm like you know what I actually don't feel like reading loads this evening right now whether that changes I don't know because it's about 6 30 but I kind of feel like just doing a little bit of editing of this vlog because I need to get started on that and then just relaxing like having a nice evening where I catch up on everyone's YouTube videos and just chill out with a hot drink and just relax that way so I don't know whether I'm going to actually read any more of this if I do then it will just be in next week's vlog because we are going to finish it out here but today in the afternoon so I spent the morning with my partner we had breakfast and everything together and then in the afternoon I met a friend from work and we went to Rochester together and it was so lovely and it was just nice that we just went out exploring we was meant to see the North Anger play but unfortunately as I mentioned that got cancelled but we decided to still meet up anyway it was just so nice Rochester is such a lovely old English town like it's so lovely the bit that we go down it, it was lovely so we did like little charity shops and stuff and then there was this gorgeous shop where downstairs is a bit like unusual mixture of different things and then upstairs they have the plant shop which is where I took some footage and oh love that plant shop so much I was really tempted to get some more plants but I didn't I withheld and instead I got a few just house plant supplies because I really have been getting into my house plants I love them I love looking after them and I'd like to do a bit more so I got a few different things so we ended up with this little water sprayer which I love this so much I love the vintage feel to it so yeah I'm gonna be filling this with water and then misting my plants which is gonna be perfect especially because a couple of them do actually need that and I haven't been doing it so now I have something I can do that with and then I also got myself a little trowel because there is a plant of my mum's that needs repotting basically it's dying um, and I'm just hoping that if I can save the part that's still alive, I can put it into something that's a lot smaller. I probably will put this in a vlog, maybe, maybe next week's vlog. So I got myself a little trowel just to do all of that with, because otherwise I have been doing all the soil and stuff with my hands, but I just, I want to feel like a proper houseplant person. So I got myself a little trowel and it's got little bees on it. It's so cute. I love it so so much will it focus there we go i just i fell in love with it it was adorable and then i also got some little gardening scissors just so when i do need to prune any of my plants and stuff i have actual things to do it with and again it's that same design it's got the bees and stuff on so i got all of that which i'm really pleased with and i got a tiny weeny little plant pot with a hair that's got glasses on which is so cute because i'm actually trying to well i'm trying my hand at propagation and um, so we're gonna see how it goes with the plants and stuff with just propagating them and hopefully i can make little plants out of these so i've got a hanging plant I can't remember the name of this one that's really bad um but a little hanging plant which I think is going to propagate quite well and then I've got a bit of a peperomia but the hope variety because I have a peperomia already but I have a different variety so I'd like to cultivate those and then I do also have a piece of a succulent my mum's got a little succulent downstairs and this leaf had fallen off but it already started growing roots so I've put that in some water to propagate that as well just to see if I can create a plant from that so that's what me I'm, I'm really getting into all of it oh my gosh update on my avocado pips they've cracked they're starting to have roots I'm super excited so they haven't the roots haven't like grown out of the pip yet but the pip has cracked and you can see the roots in it and I'm just so excited so when they start growing out I will show you guys but for now it's literally just a cracked pip so I suppose it's not much but I'm very excited as you can see I'm in my plant era and uh, we're loving it but yeah so those are my little plant bits so I had a really nice day out and then we had a little meal together and then it's kind of like an early dinner but it was nice it was a really good day I'm really pleased with it and yeah now I just felt like wrapping up this vlog because I feel like it's been a good week and you know it's been there's been some ups and downs lately and it's just been a really nice needed part and I feel like it's gonna be good very good anyway I should stop rambling and playing with my 
book sleeve, um, and go and maybe edit a video and then just chill out this evening. That is all I plan on doing. I'm on lates next week, so it's going to be a really good week because it's just late. There's no early starts and I can get stuff done in the mornings. And as I said, I might do a bit of repotting, which I'll bring you along for. But if you've made it this far, thank you so, so much. I can't believe you guys put up with the rambling. I'm honestly impressed. But let's put a plant emoji if you have made it this far. And let me know, like, do you have house plants? Is it something that you like? You know, let's have a look. Let's see how many other plant people are here. Um, but right, I am gonna go. So thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed it, please don't forget to give it that thumbs up, subscribe, comment to let me know that you're here. Social media links will be linked below and I will of course catch you in the next one.